In this video, I'll show you how to create a context model using geolocation in SketchUp and Google Earth Pro. We will also use photos from street level to add textures and detail to our model. Let's start by geolocating the model. By doing so, you get an author photo of the area. You will also be modeling to scale and SketchUp will adjust the shadows to match the location. This project is located in Oakland, California, close to Lake Merritt. I'll start by tracing the building footprint on top of the author photo. For this, I'll use the rotated rectangle tool. You will notice that the modeling axes are not aligned to the building. Aligning the axis with the building footprint will speed up modeling. Now I'll refine the footprint and outline different building elements. I'll make sure to clean up the geometry as I go. You'll want the footprint to be split up into individual faces. Now it's time to add height to the buildings. For this, I'll need Google Earth Pro. Launch Google Earth Pro and find the area where the building is located. In the bottom right corner, Google Earth will list the elevation of where the cursor is located. The highest point of this building is 125 feet above sea level. The ground level is at 26 feet. That means the building is 99 feet tall, so I'll extrude the highest part of the building, 99 feet. From here, I dial in the remaining heights. You can do this based on the difference from the highest point or from the ground level. Once the building is done, triple click to select everything and group the geometry. Now is a good time to review your geometry and clean up any unnecessary line work using the erase tool. Toggling on back edges is helpful to see all lines in the geometry. I use a hotkey K to quickly toggle back edges on and off. Using this technique, model the remaining buildings. Now that we have our context model in place, it is time to add some detail. I took some photos of this building and we will now use those to stretch some textures onto the model. I'll start by double clicking the building group so I can select individual faces. Now I'll create a material using this photo. We know the building is 99 feet tall, so I'll make the texture roughly that height. I'll apply the texture to the wall with the mural. Select the face with the texture, right click and select Texture Position. You'll see a pin for each corner of the photos. I can move the texture on the model simply by dragging the cursor. While this will move the texture, it will not make the photo fit the geometry. For this, we need to stretch the photo to match the geometry. This is done using the pins. By clicking a pin, I can relocate the pin. I want to place each pin on the photo on a corner of the building. Simply click the pin to unpin it and click the new location of the pin. There's a good chance that some corners of the building are obstructed in the photo. Just do your best to guess where those corners are located. When all pins are placed, it is time to stretch the texture onto the model. Hold the left mouse button and drag the pin to where you want it to go. In this case, the bottom left corner of the building. Repeat this for the other pins. This is easiest if you go the order red, green, blue and yellow. When you're done, hit enter. In this case, the texture doesn't fit the model exactly. 
I'm pretty happy with the texture placement, so I'll adjust the geometry to match. I'll use the same texture on this face, of course with some adjustments to make the texture fit. This is a great technique to add visual detail to your model, but it does come with some limitations. If a building has projections, like bay windows or balconies, using photo textures is problematic. Let's see what that looks like. Just like before, I'll add a photo texture and stretch the photo to match the geometry. You'll notice that even though I match the corners to the building relatively well, the texture looks odd. That's because the facade has projections. It isn't flat. If I place the SketchUp camera roughly where the photo was taken, you'll see that the texture looks pretty good. But from any other angle, the texture is warped. We can't use the texture for this facade, but we can use it to model details. I'll admit that this is not an exact science. It will involve a certain amount of guesswork. Sometimes it's helpful if you can reference photos from multiple angles. If that's not an option, Google Street View is a great resource. Start with the bigger elements. I'll start by dialing in the balconies. Based on the photo and the shadows in the photo, the balconies are roughly this wide. Trace the vertical extents of the balconies. Now trace the top and the bottom of the balcony. Copy these lines from the top balcony to the bottom balcony and distribute five copies evenly. Based on the photo, I'm guessing the balconies are projecting roughly five feet from the facade. As soon as you extrude the balconies, the texture distortion becomes very obvious. Select the balcony faces and use Entity Info to remove the texture. Erase any additional line work to clean up your geometry. From Google Street View, it looks like the stair tower is projecting out a couple of feet. Last, I will add the slot windows. I tend to remove the textures and apply simple colors to indicate materials. Repeat this step for as many buildings as needed. It will take some time to get comfortable with this way of modeling, but once you do, you'll be able to create beautiful context models from just a couple of photos. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in another video.